Hello and welcome to the Virtuast flagship podcast of Best Printers 2024. <laughs> best printer, small business, yeah. office, home use, home black and white use. color. Yeah, <laughs> label printing. Uh, that's my part. That's my favorite sort of evolution of the SEO spam is the Amazon product name that is just all of the things. It's everywhere now. Yeah. yeah. The, everything on Amazon is like 60 words long now. Yeah. It Which just, is better, though. Like, the way they name phones at Samsung or the way they name products on Amazon's website. It's, it's Samsung. It's 1,000%. <laughs> I want to be clear. Samsung, the Samsung naming conventions, and in fact, most tech product naming conventions are now like performance art. Yeah. They're just like some words, a galaxy, a number, some other letters. Yeah. Fine. They're just riffing. It's like jazz. Yeah. They're just like, here's some <laughs> ideas we had, you know? And then what the SEO spam, it's just all this technology and all this AI and all these algorithms. And we're like, what's the best way to win at them? <laughs> just shove all the words in the title field. And, and then off to the side, there's like <laughs> Sony, who's just like, would you like 16 numbers and letters <laughs> together that don't, mean, that don't mean anything? It's very good. It's very good. Anyway, we're all together in the studio. Today. Yeah. I'm your friend, Neil. I, David Pierce is here. Hello. Alex Trans is here. Hello. It's been a minute since we were all in the show at the same time. Yeah. Let alone all in the same room at the same time. Yeah, wait. How yeah. were y'all's vacations? They were good. Yeah. I, like, very good. I drank a lot of uh, Miami Vices, which is when you put a daiquiri in the pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pink and white. Incredible. That's a lot of sugar at 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> In a lot of and rum. And then at 9, 9 a.m. <laughs> but you're getting the fruit, so you're getting your vitamin C. Yeah, so that's what you really, that's it's what you fine. really want. Uh, it was good, but we were, you know, when you travel with a small child, you end up on her schedule, like a five-year-old schedule. Mm -hmm. so, so you were we, in bed by seven. We, yeah, we were in bed by nine, and we were up at six and hammered by eleven, like a five-year-old. <laughs> uh, and I was like, wait, this might be the ideal way to live my life. Yeah. Like on this, and then I immediately was like, no, I. Actually, Especially when you're on vacation, though, like being the first one up has real ramifications. You're like, yeah. the world is your oyster for like three hours at the resort before anybody else wakes up. You yeah. get the best cereal, like the best breakfast. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah, it was good. Uh, how was yours? It was good. I, I mopped. You mopped? Yeah. Did you go on vacation as a small Victorian chambermaid? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> like, Pretty much. I'm going to do like a LARP. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I really I really needed to do some mopping, so I did a lot of mopping. I really My goal was to like see if I could become one with my couch. Oh, good. For like a whole week. Oh, that's an important kind of vacation. It like I thought it was great. My dog did not agree. He he was very frustrated with my vacation, but I had a great time. Yeah. Did you watch anything? I mean, couch time is watch time. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I saw Girls Five Ever. Five Ever. Very good. Netflix Girl wants me to watch a show. I'm just not going to do it. You should do it. It's okay. very. Good. It's good. It's good. It is yeah. legitimately very good. It's, it's very like, funny. It's it's straight out of the brain of Tina Fey. So like, if you think Thirty Rock is funny, uh, you'll yeah. think Girls Five Ever is funny. And I think 30 Rock is very funny. And it spends a lot so of time country. making fun of, like, a very specific neighborhood in Brooklyn that I used to live in. So I'm like, oh, nice. yes. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yes. I'll just, give it a shot. Yeah, yeah it's, good. it's good. It's stuff. good. I went through the whole three-body problem with Netflix. You know, Do I was like, I opened Netflix. I was like, I'm going to watch this show. I watched the whole thing. And it wasn't good. Like, <laughs> I don't, and I was like, this is, I had the Netflix problem again. I need to disclose that I made a Netflix show. Our Netflix show is great. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike other some Netflix other shows. It's called The Future Of. Less so. Uh, but I don't know. It was like that was the thing I did. Because we went on vacation. We came back. And we had like several days left. Like yeah. post-vacation. Oh. Which is a clutch move. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I was like, how many spend this time? And I was like watching, watching television. Yeah, of course. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, the show is it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's why I, I switched it off and turned on the new Walking Dead show. Oh, yeah. And, I, like, that's just adorable. It's two people being like, what if we kill a bunch of zombies and make out? And I was like, oh, all no, right. The, the spoiler alert people are going to come I'm for sorry. You. I'm I sorry. I tweeted one thing about Three Body Problem. And they came for you. And they came. And I was like, this book has been out for a million years. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, it's, a, it's a weird springtime week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of news the past couple of weeks. The the government and the tech companies are just doing a thing. And then this week, everyone went on spring break. I think yeah. that's literally true. Like, yeah. everyone was like, we just got to stop the fighting. Everyone go drink a Miami Vice. We'll come back. We'll get back right back to it after yeah. spring break. Well, and now, on the flip side, we're now, what, four weeks away from the beginning of, like, developer conference season? Yeah. So everybody is out of filing legal briefs and into planning for, like, 
weird AI product announcements. And this is sort of the the small doldrums in the middle. Yeah, this yeah. is the quiet week where we saw them outside getting a beautiful tour of Wall Street with all of the other high schoolers. Lovely. Oh, yeah. No, this is the New York visit week. Yeah. When is DC visit week? When do the eighth graders it go was to last DC? Week. That was last week. The cherry blossoms came yeah, out yeah. and just every... 13-year-old in America <laughs> went to the Lincoln Memorial on the same day. It was unbelievable. Yeah. So that, that's this week where they we so the Verge's offices are in the Financial District of New York, which is very old. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of old stuff you can look at, and this is the week where they're all here looking Yeah, at they're all stuff. like, yep, there's some old stuff. I'm yeah. looking at my Tim phone. Tim Cook is like, George Washington got hammered in this bar. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real thing he thinks about all the time. But yeah. there's, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, David has structured the show into three lightning rounds. Mm-hmm. All Three sponsorable lightning rounds. <laughs> Which no one has yet to sponsor. We get a lot of emails from people. They're like, I'll pay some money. Yeah. And Promises we... don't pay the bills, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the Venmo or, the Venmo. or leave me alone. <laughs> We're going to figure this out. I promise you we'll figure this out. Um, but if you run a large company, we're good at taking a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a whole floor of people at this company <laughs> who's like a huge amount of money. We know what to do. Mm-hmm. When I'm like, someone wants to pay us 20 bucks. They're like, I don't know. Just DoorDash. Is it cash? <laughs> we should be on DoorDash. <laughs> but all we deliver is like hot podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> it's like nothing happens. Yeah. And yeah, three lightning rounds. We should start. We, there, we did have the big review this week. Yep. Mm-hmm. A few weeks after it came out, uh, we hired a new laptop reviewer, Joanna Nellius. Uh, her, she, we got her up to speed, crans. We like let her do a ThinkPad. And then we're like, MacBook Air, get it done. <laughs> yeah. And and she did. She, she had a lot of feelings about the... MacBook Air M3, 15 and 13 inch, because mm-hmm. they both came out and they're pretty similar. And she was like, they're good MacBooks. They, they got a little faster. And then she was very upset because they had eight gigabytes of RAM standard. And, and I, I tend to agree with her, but I know some people on this podcast don't. Well, yes. I mean, we're going to fight about that for many hours. Some people but have bad say, takes. It's okay. It, it brought me such great joy to watch someone else come and go through the same thing that all of us have been through with the MacBooks over the years, which is, this is very good. It's probably the best laptop you can buy. It is a teeny tiny bit better than the last one and slightly more expensive, and Apple really wants you to buy something much more expensive. Do I give that an 8 or a 9? It's like (laughs) the eternal question of the MacBook Air is like, it's probably the best laptop. It could probably, it's kind of annoying. (laughs) What do I do with that? Yeah. And it's just like, it's nice to see someone else go through this very intense process. Because the story of the MacBook Air is like, it it rules. Like it is is pretty hands down the best all around laptop on the planet. And yet, it's a pretty small upgrade over the last one. It has a bunch of the same deficiencies as the last one. And they desperately, desperately, desperately want you to spend $2,500 on a laptop and not $1,000 on a laptop. They are very good at getting you from one to the other. That's what I did. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I went with a MacBook Pro. Yeah, you got you just you you let yourself I, get specked up. I got specked up. I like like the, the that that feeling from from the early days of the MacBook Air where you you couldn't get the Air. You had to get a Pro mm-hmm. if you wanted power. I was mm-hmm. like, I know I don't I don't I know I could be fine with an Air, but I have an Air for work. This is really like it's important for me <laughs> to know the whole lineup. So I can either have a Pro to run all my Chrome tabs, or I can have an Air to run all of my Chrome tabs. But is that yeah, what you're going well, through? and Crusader Kings three. <laughs> Like, it, right, it, it plays enough. it beautifully. <laughs> uh, so what you're talking about is directly related to the 8 gigs of RAM situation, yeah. which is you yeah. settle down to buy this laptop. The base configuration should be amazing. The base configuration, compared to any other base configuration, potentially the best all-around laptop. Like, that's a, it's a real thing you can make an argument for. Sure. Yep. And then you're like, but if I put 8 gigs of RAM in this, it will last for two years, and then it will die, and I'll do this again. So I should put... 16 or 32 gigs of RAM into it. And then you're like, I should add some storage to it because now it's going to last a long time. And then you are quickly at, oh, I should just buy a MacBook Pro. Yep. I can yeah. just spend slightly even more money and I can just have a 14-inch MacBook Pro. Like right. off off the shelf, you don't have to worry about somebody like customizing it and them adding a little shipping time to it. Just get Yeah, because what is it? You go from uh, 8 to 16 gigs of RAM. That's 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. You go from the base storage, which is 256 to five twelve, that's mm-hmm. another two hundred bucks. So already you've just turned your thousand dollar or your eleven hundred dollar laptop in this case into a fifteen hundred dollar laptop. At which point you're like, well, maybe I'll just get the fifteen inch because it's not that much more expensive. Yeah. And then you get then you're up to there. And then it is, I mean, it is so perfectly calculated how to get you to buy like the mid spec 
MacBook Pro. <laughs> yeah. It's just unbelievable. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it is not the computer anyone needs. Like, I truly do not believe the premise that if you buy eight gigs of RAM, it's only going to last you two years and it won't work. I think, like, if you're a person who, like, really heavily uses your computer, sure. I think if you're going to spend money on one additional spec, RAM is always the thing. So this totally is what believe that. I believe firmly that for most people, for most uses, the base configuration of the MacBook Air, storage, RAM, everything is fine. Crazy. You're yeah. a crazy That's person. so much computer. This is what I'm trying to— But not enough RAM. Go ahead. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to understand. <laughs> it's because, like, you said this, and it was like just lobbing a bomb into chat mm. in the office. Like, like oh you were God, like, yeah, yeah. so mad at me. Yeah, I, I resisted, like, telling anybody that you said that. And then, <laughs> then you, like, you were like, yeah, I believe 8 gigs. And everybody's like, David, what oh, are yeah. you doing? And is it because we're all people who use our laptops a lot and always have a bajillion tabs open that, that we feel that need for the RAM? I mean, that's part of like, it. Like, is it is it like a I, verge? It's. I think it's two things. I think half of it is what you just described. I think the other half is we are all literally professionally trained to be sensitive to our computers being slow. Mm. Uh, and then I look at, like, my mom, who is on a nine-year-old <laughs> iPad and, like, doesn't notice that it's a problem. Like, it just, it just works fine. She taps a thing. She waits a couple of seconds, and it opens. And I'm like, do you know how long Safari <laughs> just took to open, Mom? And she's like, what are you talking about? It's just open. Like, it's whatever. Uh, I think most people don't spend as much time thinking about how long their tabs take to open <laughs> as we do. And maybe they should. And I think they arguably should. And For $1,100. <laughs> I'm just going to throw back your Vision Pro criticism. For $1,100, being like, this computer is a little slow. When it's the fastest, but it's not computer. slow. That's, it's not that, slow. that swap is immediately noticeable. So the argument, the, the that pro I, I eight that. gig Absolutely argument, that. is that the SSD is so fast that swapping to and from virtual memory using the state of the art, blah blah blah, that Apple is state of the art. All right, Apple you, uh, is imperceptible. This is the argument. This is the argument. And on the new one, apparently the storage is much faster, so that argument might be closer to true. Yeah, the argument is wrong. <laughs> 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 like the yeah. storage is still slower than the RAM. It might be very fast, but it's still slower than the RAM. Mm -hmm. And so when you hit the swap, which you can do really easily on a MacBook Air with AK of RAM. I'm gonna bet I'm swapped right now. Let's see. Uh what do you what do you what do you do to He's going into the activity monitor? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you had some like weird utility. David no, is the proprietor am, of installer. I have hit often, the swap. often has weird utilities. I do have weird about. utilities, but I have hit the swap. Yeah. How do you, how do you it's just you like happens immediately. If you go to memory, it'll tell you down at the bottom. Oh. Swap used. Sorry, keep going. Sorry. Some riveting radio <laughs> program. <laughs> Open activity monitor and click on memory. Uh, it's a yeah. how-to. Yeah. Uh, all I'm saying is that's the argument. And I th at this point in 2024, not a good argument. They should just bump you up to 16 gigs of RAM at standard. And then so, I think this computer would be uh, amazing. I, I do agree with that. I think, I think it would be better if everybody had 16 gigs of RAM. I think it's absurd that Apple charges $200 to go from 8 to 16 when that RAM doesn't cost anywhere near $200. <laughs> the most enduring scam. Oh, Apple yeah. I mean, the margins. And it's, and it's soldered in, so you can't even upgrade right. it later. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, used to, the, the hack was you'd buy it with the garbage RAM, and then you just upgrade it as soon as you got yeah, it. Yeah, you do the thing where you lift it up the keyboard. Yeah, and, just, and you're done. And now they're like, no. You will pay us two hundred dollars or swap <laughs> and suffer. Anyhow, all I'm saying is yeah. great computer. It it's like the base storage of the iPhone or the base storage of iCloud. And I was like, well, how much is just enough to annoy you into paying us more? Oh no, that's real. Uh, but how much? When was it that you switched your family to Chromebooks? Uh, ages ago. How is that going? Uh, it's fine because I bought. Uh, <laughs> Well, you I got bought, a lot of 16 gig of RAM Chromebooks <laughs> running out there? Yeah, I bought, so it's only one Chromebook. Okay. It was the Google, what was the fanciest one? The, the Pixel dollar. No, it was before. The well, there was the Chromebook Pixel. That was the, the sick one. Yeah, I'm literally Googling bought my mom a Chromebook because I might be the only. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me just get that right. Um, no, I bought our Chromebook Pixel in 2016. Okay. It was, it was $1,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It has a Core i7. And like 16 gigs of RAM, and it is Did just it really rocking. Wow, because it was so overpowered yeah. for its time. Now it's a little underpowered to run Chrome. Uh, my 2015 iMac, which is such a <laughs> damning critique of Chrome, <laughs> it's not great that an i7 and 16 gigs of RAM like barely keep up anymore. Uh, my 2015 iMac, which is done now, 
Oh. It's over. Whoa. It's wow. like the fans are just like on all the time. But it lasted as long as it did, almost 10 years, 32 gigs of RAM. That's a, if I have one piece of advice for buying a Mac, which is just load it up, especially because it's soldered in, load it up with RAM at the beginning. Because yep. you can't fix it, you can't upgrade it. Everything else, you'll be fine. Like over time. You'll I be do fine. agree with that. I also think 256 gigs of storage, unless you do a lot of media, like if you're, if you just, take photos on your phone and upload them to Google Photos and that's your photo strategy, 256 gigs is plenty. Oh, I, I disagree there. I know you do. Well, and then I'm saying this as someone who has a server at home to offload all my big files. Right, like a I, super I normal the, workflow for regular people yeah. that everybody does at home. But even yeah. with that, I'm hitting that 256. Like the, the, the laptop I bought now has 512 because I was tired of hitting the 256 and being like, oh, I have to go delete this game that I play two times a year, but I really want to have access What's using to it. up all your storage? It, it's games. Okay. I mean, fair. <laughs> then I, I'll add that to media. That's yeah. totally fair. Games are enormous. They're so You download big. two games now and you've eaten 256. But absent those two things, there's very little you're going to do that's going to take up that much storage. That's true. My mom has like 100 yeah. billion like gigabytes. Fine. Yeah. Just and and 256, literally, unless you do media, which is huge, and especially now, like, good God, every photo off the iPhone is enormous yeah. now. So, like, get as much as you can if that's a thing that you care about and you're going to, like, be in Lightroom doing stuff, which is another case to get more RAM. But if you're just – I firmly believe that most people buy laptops, download a web browser, and that's the end. Uh, that is that is 98% of most people's laptop experience now and, like, maybe Office. And for that, the base config is fine. I so firmly believe that. I think you should spend at least fourteen ninety nine on the one of sixteen gigs of RAM and five hundred twelve gigs of storage. <laughs> and then at that point, why not get the fifteen inch? <laughs> yeah, and then, then you, there's a there's a then pro. Just, I'll sell you. Yeah, and then you're just at a fourteen pro, and you're like, you have the fourteen pro. Why Actually, I thought 16? the biggest takeaway from uh, Joanna's review is that the M2 is still for sale, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's a pretty good deal if you can spec it up. Which is funny because this was also in a lot of ways the story of the M2 review was that mm -hmm. the M1 is still for sale. Yeah, uh, and now I mean you can buy the M1. At Walmart for what is it like six hundred ninety nine bucks? Did but we ever? So this hit while I was on vacation, yeah. and there was like a furious amount of like conversation about whether Walmart was blowing out old stock or whether Apple yeah. was going to make more M ones, and if they they're going to make more M ones, yes, that That's seems wild. to be. I don't know that we've ever actually had that officially confirmed, but that that is yeah. It's, it's every bit of evidence we have suggests that that is the case. Unclear. It seems like it's going to be going for a while, and it's not necessarily like they're making more M ones. They just have a ton of stock. No, they don't. No, That's not really? how Apple works. Literally, Apple pioneered the idea of not having warehouses. No, no, no. I mean, they have they around. they have like they have tons of extra stuff around. That's how we got the iPhone SE. The iPhone SE came because they had a ton of the uh, the uh, the cases, right? Yeah, sure. Having having parts so that if, they're yeah, very good you, at making very cheaply. You, yes. Yeah, like like they they had a ton of those MacBook Air original MacBook Air casings. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Tim Cook is like, what are you doing, guys? I'm the Shove supply chain guy. Shove some have... M1s in them. <laughs> send them to Walmart. Send them to Walmart. I think they are still making them. I think they, they've, they've projected out their demand and they're still making them. We have that quote from Walmart in one of our stories where the Walmart guy is like, we're going to have these for as long as people want them. Yeah. Which has to be. No, I think I... it's a huge warehouse, like Steven Spielberg style <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> And yeah. Tim Tim doesn't like to think about it. You don't bring it up around Tim. But Walmart Walmart's like, we'll, we'll take care of this for you, Tim. Reminder you. that Apple made the 13-inch MacBook Pro with optical drive for five or six years after uh, they stopped selling it. Liam gets it. Oh, thank you, Liam. Wow. Yeah. No, this is I, – what I think is true is I think it's less that Apple has a warehouse full of them somewhere and more that Apple, with that wedge design in particular, is now at like unbelievable – economies of scale yeah that's and to right. just throw that away like to get rid of all the tooling that's really expensive and the processes that you spin up to do this stuff like there is a group of people who want those and will pay that price and what i think is most surprising is not that these still exist and that apple would keep making them but that apple is interested in selling a 700 hundred dollar laptop at walmart mm -hmm. like to me that's a much bigger change than anything else going on here it's just this is not a thing apple has ever done before and it's like it, th there's a world in which you would argue it feels like a company running scared trying to make money wherever they can. You I don't really think it's that, but it is a definite like strategy change in a way that I think well, has not been yeah, talked about. Yeah, because Walmart enough. is very focused on luxury. Like their their whole thing is luxury and 
Not Walmart. Let me take that Walmart, back. Walmart, very Ooh, confused. Very focused on let me Let me read when it out. I think one. about Walmart. That's what I think when of, I, too. Yeah, yeah um, that, that, that's all switched up. Uh, but yeah, like Apple is very well known for being all about luxury. Yeah. Walmart, less so. Le- yeah. Yeah, they just do different jobs. And like if, if Apple wanted to figure out how to sell the best $500 computer, it probably could have. It probably could have done that 35 years ago. They put that computer in Walmart. Uh, it was called the iPad. It has been in Walmart the entire time. Yeah. Uh, my two-year, uh, you know, uh, in the woods experience, mm-hmm. Walmart was the only store. I spent a lot of time contemplating what electronic products are <laughs> in Walmart in Catskill, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, it's iPhones, mm-hmm. all the iPhones, mm-hmm. including the Pros, uh, and it was iPads. And then they just didn't put the Macs in there. And now they have one Mac. And I think the iPad Mac, a $700 M1 MacBook Air wedge design and whatever iPads you can get at Walmart, Apple's just like, they, you want the laptops. <laughs> like, let's be honest about what people want to buy here. <laughs> yeah. Do they want laptops. People are going to go in looking for an M1 MacBook Air, and there's going to be a, a salesperson who's like, wouldn't you rather have – an, a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard and an Apple Pencil that's fourteen hundred dollars all in, mm-hmm. and somebody's gonna leave with just like a bag full of <laughs> nonsense, and they're like, "I just yeah. wanted a laptop." <laughs> but uh, at, at, not at Walmart. There wouldn't be a salesperson at Walmart. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it was. It was. Uh, look, I did a lot of shopping at Walmart in the in my two years of pandemic uh-huh. woods living. Uh, there was not a lot of salespeople. Around. It <laughs> yeah, was not a thing. Fair. But uh, all I'm saying is uh, to to connect the dots between the two of you. Yeah. The Apple running scared, maybe less scared. Apple finding every dollar it can find yeah. right now and just squeezing is weird. This is the company that gets rid of its old products. Yeah. Like, this is the company that's like, we're going to cannibalize ourselves. And now they're selling three generations of the same laptop. We, it's weird. Yeah, it's very different. And it, it changed kind of quietly without... Yeah. Like, they, they, they did, nobody made any noise about it, but now you look and it's like it... it operates like a very different company than it did even just a few years ago. Yeah. And I could probably put uh, killing the extraordinarily wasteful and stupid car project. Yep. Uh, this, like the pressure on the app store, the anger around the app store antitrust stuff, and the we're going to sell more products at more price points than ever, like all in a line. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they, they saw that like money is not infinite. Yeah, which it, it is for them. <laughs> <laughs> Historically, it has been, yes. Uh, but it's just weird. It's just like a weird moment for that company. Yeah. And uh, then there was that, I think it was a Reuters story this week that Apple is now working on personal robots. Oh, yeah. I was like, okay, guys. Sure. Yeah. That'll go good. <laughs> we'll see them when we see them. Uh, we should mention, by the way, as long as we're talking about Apple, they rolled out uh, personas that just like float around with you this week. Haunting. In the Vision Pro. You should watch the video. The video's on our various video platforms. Uh, it's like Wes and V... And Terrible. they just don't seem happy with each other. I gotta be honest with it. <laughs> I have not just... wanted to put the Vision Pro back on since I handed our review to V. I was talking to Wes earlier, and he was like, "I gotta go Facetime some friends and troll them really good. I'll talk to you later." And I was good. like, "Good, good." That feels like the right use of the Vision Pro. That that is That's the like best use. Strong use of thirty five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, seven out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of amazing gadgets, Kranz, you've got one here. For yeah. Opening lightning round. Oh my God. So Chris Welch. If if you, most of you are not in in the Verge office, so you don't get to see Chris as often as I do, as as often as I do, but uh, he's had this suitcase at his desk <laughs> for a while now, and and the suitcase I'd always be like, what is that? He'd be like, it's 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 a TV. He'd be like, don't ask about the suitcase. Don't ask about the suitcase. <laughs> and he finally reviewed the suitcase, and what I quickly learned was that everyone has been seeing this LG suitcase TV on TikTok, and so a lot of people are like, oh. Oh. Chris finally said it's pretty okay. It's time to get it. But really, but I want to I want to be clear. You probably don't need the twelve hundred dollar, ten eighty p, no twenty seven inch TV in a in a suitcase. It's cool as hell though. It is very cool. It just like it hits like like he, he talked about in in his review. It just hits that gadget spot where you're just like, yeah, I want this. Yeah, it's foldy and clicky and. Mm-hmm. It's a little outlandish. It's a touchscreen for no reason. I sat on the floor and played solitaire for like 25 minutes. Yeah. It, you just can do that because it's, it's fun. Yeah. And I just really, really enjoy the thing. And I think it needs no – it doesn't need to exist in the world. But also I'm like, well, maybe I do need one for my bedroom because I can't figure out where to put a TV. Maybe I just have a – In a suitcase? In a little suitcase. The answer is a suitcase? On my bed? Mm, <laughs> that would go pro- well. You need a ceiling projector. There's a fan up there. 
Get rid of the fan. I saw <laughs> it uh, uh, at CES, of course, in yeah. some like random booth, like a combo platter light fan projector. Oh, yeah. oh well, there we go. Then yeah. I'm done. That's what I'm going to get. <laughs> it's good. And obviously, when you turn the fan on, the whole thing vibrates slightly. <laughs> it's very good. Very yeah. good. What I can't decide about this TV is whether I want it to be much better mm-hmm. or much cheaper. That that was part of me is like, give me the 1080p screen, give me 27 inches, make it 500 bucks, and like, will I? buy this thing and take it on vacation with me three times a year? Like, yeah, I probably would. Uh, or am I like, I this becomes, you know, the, the like basement TV for all intents and purposes, and I want it to be better than this. And I'm so torn between those two things. Because $1,200 for what this thing actually is, is too much. It's but ludicrous. Both yeah. of you have now described wanting this TV to keep it stationary in a room. <laughs> You're like the basement TV. Just like buy a TV, dude. No, because the it doesn't turn TV. into a suitcase. Just like buy a TV. Yeah, like why? The S- purpose of a suitcase is that you take it with you. Yeah. Places. It's my vacation TV. I will say the thing where they're like put it in the bed of your truck and watch TV is like. The dream. It is the dream. It is also just the most specific use case. It's like I'm going to tailgate with this thing. Six times a week, <laughs> and it's going to be worth it. <laughs> like, if you are a season ticket holder to something, yeah, buy yeah. this television. Like that's that's where I'm at. It is true. Chris's basic point was like, we need more gadgets again, which is uh, oh, like a direct yeah. pull on my yeah. heartstrings. Well, it is. It do, I think it should be cheaper. I don't think it should be better. I think it should be cheaper. He he made okay. a good point that he understood why it was so expensive because it is such a niche product, and he's like, if they made it better, then it would just be more expensive. Twelve hundred dollars is also expensive, but like. I don't. I don't know if I fully buy it, but I, I actually know, don't like, buy that at all. Like you don't? LG can make a good TV for virtually no money, right? All they've really done here is buy a suitcase. They they put it in a sick suitcase. Yeah, it really is just a TV and a hinge. Yeah, like that's not. But you can you can plug stuff into it. You can plug. Stuff you can into play it. your Switch on it. It's it's got a touch screen, so you can like. You play solitaire? You should buy one. There's yeah. just buy one something, right now, David. There's just something about this one picture in the review where the, the TV is on a couch and it's it's folded up. The suitcase is open. It's flat. And there's two people on either side of it playing chess. And this picture is both like truly absurd because I cannot imagine regular people ever actually doing this and also makes me want it so bad. And you can see that 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 whole conflict in their faces too in the photo. Yeah, they're kind of like, what is this bad chess app that I'm playing on this enormous <laughs> television? But I'm also having a good time. Yeah. yeah. Who doesn't have a it. good time playing WebOS chess on a <laughs> suitcase TV? <laughs> All right, speaking of gadgets, my lightning round is the yearly printer r- review was published. It's a big day for you. Big day for me. Uh, this is what I assume you did on vacation the whole time, was just plan your epic comeback <laughs> with the printer. So if you don't know... Something is happening to Google search right now where uh, various websites, their traffic is declining because Google changed the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some of them are – we did a decoder with Mia about one of them, House Fresh, the air purifier blog. There's a retro gaming site whose uh, editor-in-chief or owner or someone is complaining on Twitter that their traffic is – and then a bunch of like content farms. Right. Also. And the idea is to kill the content farms. Yeah. Yeah. But they are – Catching some of the good, caring sites. A lot of people catching strays on yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, something like the internet as we know it. I believe this to be true. The internet as we know it is about to fall apart. Oh, I really agree with that. Yeah, like, I agree something with that something right. weird is happening on the yeah. internet out there. Uh, so my contribution to that is to make stories <laughs> that point it out <laughs> 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 by using the form of the stories. The content farms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a very meta art project. Yeah. 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 I think the Verge should be an art project. <laughs> uh, so the answer to the question, what is the best printer, has been unchanging for a decade, mm-hmm. which is the cheapest brother laser printer you can find. Yep. But that is – like Google cannot accept that as an answer because it's not new enough, because there's not enough shopping links, because the data isn't semantic enough. How many H2s you got in that, that piece? I've won. Got to have it. And it's just, it's just me pointing out that LMs don't know the answer to the question yet. <laughs> um, anyway, so I wrote the piece. Uh, once again, we have sold like 2,000 printers. That's amazing. <laughs> Which is just like the funniest part of this whole thing. It's, it's my like, favorite part. It's easily the funniest part of this whole thing. It's like, what should this actually look like? It should just be like, just buy this one and shut up. 
Like that's all anyone wants on the internet when they're looking for product advice. And Google's like, no. And Google won't do it. You have to update the page. So mm-hmm. you look at the internet and you're like, you type in best printer and all the top results are like updated last week mm-hmm. to point out that a, a bad product is the new winner. Or like they we like we changed our methodology. And you look at the number of sites that one claim to re- have reviewed every printer and then claim to have updated those printer reviews yesterday. Mm. And then also get the answer. <laughs> like updating it on January 1st, 2024, so that you – to say they've updated it in January 2024. 1st, 2024. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It is. So my, my big edit to you in this story was to add a bunch of links to the kinds of things you're talking about. And some of it is is just truly wild. And it's like – I feel like everybody has seen these at some point, right? You Google one of these and you go onto some site you've never heard of and it's basically just like a product name. People on Amazon like it. Here's what they say. Copy and paste a bunch of Amazon results and, and call it a day. But the, like the, one of them is on – People.com, the eight best home printers of 2024 yeah. tested and reviewed. Like nothing against – I have not even read this piece. I don't know. But what in the world is People Magazine doing caring about printers? Yeah. Like well, how is this what the internet has become? That's how they print the magazine out. <laughs> it's like, uh, CBS News I think was my favorite one. And then I realized like the demographic of CBS News might be looking for printers. I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, it's, it's just very odd yeah. that if you like look at the architecture of our internet – a lot of people are like affiliate, weird affiliate clicks will pay for everything. And then you just look at what that means in practice, which is trying to game Google search to get those affiliate clicks. And that we're in the death spiral. Right? Yeah. Well, and one of the things Google has been trying to take away recently is sites that not only do that, but try to hide it, that all have a sort of sneaky navigational part of their site that's not in the nav. They never put it on the homepage. You can never find it. It's like, Parts of these websites exist exclusively for Google. It's not just stuff that is like made because you see it on Google Trends, which a lot of people do, and that's like that's a thing we think about. It's a thing everybody thinks about. Like knowing what people want to know is fine. But like when you go to this deep, deep hole of like we are going to actively wall this off from the rest of our site so that the people who come here on purpose never even find it, it's like yeah. that's tough. And that is that is now a game a lot of people feel like they have to play. People doesn't. You can find it on the People page. Yeah, people, I just had to go check. People's like, "What's up, guys? We love printers." <laughs> no, they also love. What's Ryan Reynolds up to? Printers, pool cleaners, sure, that's and, the dandruff, and dandruff, dandruff, dandruff shampoo. That's this is the stuff. Yeah, it's it's just very odd. It's a very yeah. odd moment on the internet. I like fully believe uh, that this is not sustainable, like in any way, shape, or form. I give it a year before like the Google fied internet turns into whatever the next thing's going to be. I think that's probably right. There was a really yeah. interesting uh, – the folks at 404 Media the other day wrote about a search engine called Kagi, which is one I've used and been talking about for a while. And I just like posted about it and was like, oh, yeah, this is good. I've been using it for a while. This is a good story. They were talking about how much better it is than Google and shocked at the number of people I got who were like, I'm done with Google. I'm out. I'm over it. I've moved on. I finally switched. And I feel like Google has had this sort of like inevitability for so long that I just feel starting to crack in a lot yeah. of ways. Like I think – there is this sense that Google is not the only option anymore. And I think AI has kind of undone that in people's brains, even though AI is not actually that good at a lot of search things. But it does, it feels like Google being sort of too Google to fail feels like it's slipping what was the in most a really interesting way. Recent like search you went to do and Google just totally failed you. I haven't used Google in a while, if I'm being honest. Okay. Uh, but I, I I still use it, and I still am like, wow, it sucks every day that I don't <laughs> change um, my behavior. So it's not a straight Google search, but I actually have an answer to this question because I've been thinking about it ever since this happened. Yeah. I have a Google – I don't even know what they call them anymore – a a, you know, a circle that runs Google Assistant in my bathroom, mm-hmm. <laughs> a Nest Hub. What are they called now? Sure. Have they, sure. Have they killed Nest yet? Yeah. A Google Home. Yeah, it's um, one of those. Uh, you know, a circle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a fabric circle with a microphone Google. in it. Google circle. <laughs> a Google thing. Um, <laughs> I should know the name of this product. Is it it's the little Google, guy? Is it the Home it's Mini? It's a Nest Hub. Yeah, it's a Home Mini. Okay. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. A circle. The little the little guy. Yeah. Like the yeah. big hockey puck. Kind I of highly yeah. recommend uh, putting one of those in your bathroom. They're very useful in there. Uh, and I, you know, I, sometimes I have to play a podcast in the morning. Sometimes I just have it set a time. Like all this stuff. Yeah. And I asked it how long it would take to drive to the airport. Mm-hmm. And first it answered and with a number of miles. Mm. 
and then it said, I can't. And I said, well, well, how many minutes will that take? And it just couldn't. And then it sent me some some stuff on the web. And I was like, all of this AI. <laughs> like, all of this AI and Google Maps. Yeah, like, you have that. You have it's all there. of the skills are If right I just there. asked Google Maps this question, it would immediately deliver me that answer. Mm -hmm. And you can't. And it's like, well, we just didn't close the loop. Yep. And that, to me, I was like, oh, I should have just tried something. Anything else would have been fine. And I, yeah. I think that that's like the Google loop closing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they get better at it. But it's like they've had a long time. You wrote about this yeah, this week. We're, we're going to get to that. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that's the last one that really failed for me. And I was mm -hmm. just like, how is it possible? Like, even if at this point, if Gemini had just lied to me. Yeah. And then like 45 minutes. <laughs> right. I don't know. That's probably a it's, the, yeah, it's seems like, right. Yeah, yeah, sure, right? That feels right. Yeah. yeah about 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Like, it would have been better than just, like, I don't know. Yes. Like, there's nothing less useful than asking a robot how far away something is, and it's, like, 25 miles. And it's, like, cool. Okay. What does that mean yeah. to me at this point in <laughs> Should time? I run? <laughs> like, what's the plan here? <laughs> just hustle it. What's your last one that Google filled on you? Uh, yesterday, I was trying to decide. I asked it. Should I get an impact driver if I already have a regular like power? Oh, computer? that's an impossible. That's like too hard. I, yeah, it was too hard for it. It was like no, and I was like, what power tool should I get? And it was like, here's all the power tools for carpentry. And I was like, I didn't. I just wanted to know what power tools should like a nerd who wants more power tools get. You failed me. <laughs> and I got really upset. That's a really hard. That maybe I, hard maybe I, I went you too really, hard. You've opened like that's a Pandora's box question. Yeah. Like I have seen videos of people arguing that. Uh, the, the housing crisis caused people to switch from the standard drills to impacts because all the people with experience building houses got forced out of the market and the kids didn't know what they were doing. Like, Whoa. you're touching on a third rail of power <laughs> yeah. tools of that question. It's uh, Like, somewhere a data center exploded because you asked <laughs> Google that question. I went, like, I had to go, like, a couple of links in. Just, I was like, I need something that's not people trying to sell me power tools. Yeah. And, and eventually I got, like, some people debating impact drivers and they're like yeah if you you got a lot of uh, sheetrock you got or not sheetrock you got a lot of drywall you got to get up you get that impact driver change your life and chris, i was like well i don't have that our publisher chris grant is about to run in here if he you're is. just generally talking about power tools he's uh -huh. gonna, yeah he's gonna go crazy kick the door open <laughs> uh well i'm just saying but this is my my prediction a year from now market what, what day is it april 4th market mm -hmm. a year from now whatever google is today will look radically different hey siri <laughs> <laughs> I no, I agree, and I think I think Google knows that too. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure they know what to do about it. Do you see the? I don't know if it was a rumor or a report, but there was. I just saw kind of some, something go by, basically saying that Google is now considering charging for its AI stuff, which I find totally fascinating. Uh, like the the actual AI search stuff would be a paid thing instead of a free thing. Messy and complicated, but like you get the sense Google knows it can't be like this for much longer, and it's mm -hmm. flailing in a bunch of directions trying to fix it. But I think it seems like the internet is getting crazy faster than Google is well, getting you know, good at doing the things solution. About it. They just need to sell some shit in Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Knock two hundred dollars off, sell it in Walmart, you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. So, some other AI stuff for the lightning round. Microsoft is working an Xbox AI chatbot. It's a scoop from Tom Warren. It's just clippy for Xbox. <laughs> and he's right that it needs to be called Xbot. I just I it does need to be called Xbot. That is correct. Um, the, the, we, Microsoft confirmed it. We are testing an Xbox support virtual agent, an internal prototype of an animated character that can query Xbox support topics with voice or text. This is the general manager of gaming AI at Xbox. Mm. The prototype makes it easier and quicker for players to get help with support topics using natural language. Taking It's like, this is great. This is cool. But like, how many people are on the daily just like asking Xbox support for help? <laughs> Why did I lose at FIFA? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I I mean customer support AI is like it's just coming done like that's that is good or bad that is the future of everything right like all the the robot phone trees are going to be replaced by chatbots and that's just where we're headed and that's kind of what this sounds like I think there is possibly more Xbox could do here but yeah start somewhere. this just sounds like it's going to be an adorable little customer service guy. no way I, I love this idea of it killing phone trees though like if AI kills the phone tree. Oh my god! Oh, that's coming. I really, yeah, I that's really think here. it is. Game yeah, changed. It's like, it just, frankly, like just online chat customer service over having to call and wait for a human was delightful. Now all of that is just being replaced by AI bots who are like yeah, helpful. Mm -hmm. And my favorite thing is the people who go on 
to those things like the people who went to the car rental company and asked it to like <laughs> do all kinds of weird stuff. Like this stuff is going to get bad and crazy and weird, but that is, I think at this moment, probably the most slam dunk yeah. business use case for all of this. It is just going to eat the customer service industry. Right. Because all of, I mean, working customer support is not fun. You are mostly reading scripts that people yeah. just have a robot read the script. Yeah. I just want to know how they will all respond to me just mashing the zero button over and over again, <laughs> which is all representative, I do. human, <laughs> <Yeah>. representative. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. I feel like I never call a, a phone tree with a problem the phone tree is designed to solve. Never. It's like I don't need to check my balance. Like I can definitely do that on my phone. Yeah. You know, it's like I need to do something hard. Who calls to check their balance still? Like, why are they offering that still? Because I've noticed that too. I called the bank, and they're like, "Do you want to check your balance?" I'm like, "No." No, I'm, I'm looking at the app right now that told <laughs> yeah. me to call you. Yeah, I'm going to start calling to check my balance. Yeah. <laughs> like, how am I doing? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so I got to talk to somebody. <laughs> Samsung says Bixby is not dead, which is an incredible thing to say. <laughs> like, because it implies that Bix- everyone thinks Bixby right. is dead. My t shirt that says, no, Bixby is not dead is. Causing a lot of yeah. questions. A yeah. Samsung executive tells CNBC that the company is, quote, working so hard <laughs> to put AI features in Bixby, uh, even though they just did a big deal with Google and Gemini is now all over the phone and the phones are running Gemini Mini, Gemini Nano. I'm not great at Google product names today. Neither Look, I'm is back Google. from Don't vacation. I, you know, there was a big awards banquet this week, <laughs> the ASME Awards. Time. I drank a lot at them. Just like Google stuff, Google Circle. Mm-hmm. Gemini Tiny. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, you're doing great. That's fine. <laughs> you're, as, you're as good as anybody, including most of Google's product managers. Like, don't worry about it. Uh, so, if you will recall, when Bixby was announced, Dog With Shoes, mm-hmm. uh, if you are not caught up on Vergecast lore, Bixby, the name, sounds like a dog wearing shoes. That's the entire joke. That's it, yeah. It's a good joke. Like, if you were to imagine, if you were to draw a picture of something called Bixby, you would imagine a dog wearing shoes. It was a butler, too. Yeah, like a butler, yeah. like, who go, but yeah. like a you know, yeah, like a dog fancy butler. dog. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people have sent us uh, pictures, cartoons. I encourage you to go ask an image generator to make a Bixby dog wearing shoes and send it to us. Long this ears, pic- short ears. Uh, long, long. Yeah, that's what. I this thought. is a real floppy dog. Yeah, you that's what, what I thought. That's what I thought. Bix- Bixby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you will recall, the original Bixby, the idea was that it would not compete with like Google Assistant to do go like web queries. It would change the settings on your phone. Right. It was designed to do stuff. Never did it. You're like, yeah, never. The, it was not a good butler. I mean, it was a dog. <laughs> what, we're, we're, Dogs aren't good butlers. <laughs> what do we think we're Inherently doing? suck at it. <laughs> what do we think we're doing here? Um, but now they're saying we're working so hard to make it that, which is fascinating because they still think that is a thing that people want. I think it is. I think, like, the idea that I can just yell at my phone to do something, like... Go download the Ticketmaster app. Way better user experience than what it actually currently takes to go download the Ticketmaster app. But it just has never really worked. But I think we're actually at a point with a lot of this AI stuff where, like, in that sort of limited scope of, like, things your phone is capable of doing, have the system connect the dots for you, that can work. Like, is is it easier to say, turn on Bluetooth and look for this weird name of headphones that I have? Is that easier than going into the menu and hitting the thing? Like, probably not. But I think Samsung's idea that this is less about, like, getting esoteric philosophical answers about the world and more about just, like, getting the stuff done that you do on your phone, well, it's I think kind is of right. What we talked about earlier, where it's, it's customer support. Yeah, right? it basically like, is. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's for people being like, I don't know how to turn Bluetooth on on my phone. How do I do it? Right. And Bixby will appear. Yeah, like, a Bixby, my phone's in Portuguese. <laughs> Fix that. Like, <laughs> perfect. Obrigado. I was just going to read a quote from uh, Juan Jun Choi, Executive Vice President of Mobile at Samsung. I believe we have to redefine the role of Bixby so that Bixby can be equipped with generative AI to be smarter. You have to redefine Bixby's role. Well, it, Not a Bixby butler Bixby has to roll. It has to have a role. <laughs> uh, we'll see. So Bixby exists on all of Samsung's other products. You can see how they build an whole ecosystem. I don't know, man. I, I I feel like we're all racing to shove AI into these moments, and I think the phone companies are particularly afraid of the rabbits and the humanes and the blah blah blahs. You wrote a piece about this this week. Mm-hmm. Like the AI gadgets are coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think you mentioned developer conferences. 
I'm confident we're going to see a bunch of AI stuff in iOS at WWDC. Google, obviously, at I.O. is going to talk about it a lot. I can't imagine they will, Microsoft will talk about anything else at Build. And no. It's like, I mean, and the problem is all of these companies, there's basically like two sides of the world at this point, right? There's the companies that have done well in smartphones, which is three companies. <laughs> it's Apple, it's Google, and it's Samsung. Those companies are desperate to figure out an AI reason for your smartphone so that you will keep using your smartphone. Because what they're afraid of is that this new generation of other companies is going to come in, and they're not going to have solved the whole problem immediately, but they're going to have fixed some part of the user experience that people are like, oh, this is the thing that gets me past my phone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I'm particularly looking for with what Humane is doing and what Rabbit is doing and companies like Brilliant and even Meta with the smart glasses that are getting the AI. Like, Can they start to pull pieces of what I do on my phone out of my phone? And if the answer is yes, that starts to kind of get in the way of this, like, essentially three-company ownership of the smartphone universe, at least in the U.S. And so it's not at all an accident that you have Apple with Siri, Google with Gemini, and Samsung with Bixby, like, desperately trying to figure out how to make your phone AI inside of the existing structure of phones, which is very hard to do because an AI that can do all the things I want it to do is literally not allowed in the way yeah. that phones exist right now. So it's going to be fascinating. And so Apple is either going to have to say like, oh, Siri can now go download apps for you and do stuff inside of those apps and it has weird permission that nothing has ever had before. Or it's going to like protect this crazy revenue stream that is the App Store at the risk of losing it all to gadgets that come up with a new way to do it. It's going to be a really fun like three months. Yeah. <laughs> Pure chaos. Okay. I'm telling you, a year from now. Yeah. That's my prediction. In the, in the spring doldrums, I'm just like a year from now. Whole new internet. Yep. All right. We should take a break. Come back. We have lightning round part two. Still available to be sponsored. Call now. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Lightning round part two. Pew, pew. <laughs> this one's gonna be fast. We're gonna. <laughs> David pointed out the first lightning round was almost an hour long. <laughs> and we talked about four things. Classic lightning round. Yeah. All right, we're just gonna go. We're gonna. This is my plan for this one. I'm just gonna read the headlines. Oh, okay. And then we're just going to... Alex, now just leave. Yeah. Just, <laughs> it's fine. John Stewart's back on The Daily Show, on, yep. uh, just on Mondays, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had a good segment on AI, with mostly being fake outs. Uh, and then he interviewed Lena Khan and basically ac accused Apple of censoring his previous show on Apple. Yeah. And this isn't the first time he's done that. That's the thing I like. That's what I wanted to talk about on the show. It was like, what's going on with Apple and John Stewart? Because he keeps being like, hey... Apple censored me more than once. It wouldn't let me talk about China. It wouldn't let me talk to Lena Khan. Like, it wouldn't let me do stupid pokes at technology. What's going on over at Apple? And that's a bad sign. Yeah. Like, Although, what did Apple think they were buying? Yeah, like everyone around I've, that. I've wondered that too. Like, just don't make a deal with John Stewart. It's like it's fine. It's if, if that's if that's how you feel. Just don't have John Stewart. <laughs> I, like, I don't well, know. Well, that's what they eventually decided. Well, Let's, right. Yeah. But I think about like the, there was a the thing Ryan Johnson said a few mm -hmm. years ago about how uh, one of the sneaky things about Apple is they'll never let the bad guy have an iPhone in a movie. Mm -hmm. You guys heard? You've heard yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. 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 Uh, and I, I think about that all the time as just sort of like a silly quirk of Apple, right? And there's a lot of things going on with how distribution works and there's like now Tom Cruise can never be fighting an enemy with a name because it gets associated with a country and the movie doesn't play in that country so like you can move around inside of this landscape in all kinds of weird ways this one is just like it just seems like it was a bad fit from the beginning and I also I don't know John Stewart personally but I get the distinct sense that if you make John Stewart a list of things he can't do he's gonna then attempt to go do every single one of them yeah <laughs> and so I feel like it's almost a miracle that lasted this long with Apple yeah. but it was very funny to hear him say to Lena Khan I wanted to have you on my show and Apple said uh, by the way Lena Khan is a chair of the Federal Trade Commission right. yep. she leads a lot of antitrust efforts Federal Trade Commission not the entity suing Apple for Correct. antitrust violations. That's the DOJ. But she's the face of a lot of it. She has a lot of feelings about antitrust in general. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, lot of things. And I, the tech companies all hate her. It's like a real thing. Yeah. But it's like weird. Like I, I come back to this all the time. Same as you, Alex, which mm -hmm. is like these tech companies, they want, they want to do media. And then they get one slice of what it's actually like to do media, which is just having to be okay with things. And they're like, no, thank you. Yeah, but I mean, they're they're we're seeing they're they're increasing their control in Hollywood. Like that, like Apple is doing pretty well. 
Apple TV was the second most searched thing during the outage yesterday. Like, like they, they have this power and, and is always, I think, very uncomfortable for me to see any media organization, which Apple now is, saying, no, you can't cover something. And, and that's been the way it's been always, right? There's always been censors at, at these companies saying, no, you can't talk about this. No, you can't talk about that. And it felt like in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, those censors, their power had really started to wane because we had these different ways mm-hmm. of getting this content to people. It wasn't just broadcast television. It was also, it was the films, but it was also streaming. It was also cable, all these other ways. And Apple came in and was like, yeah, network censorship, huh? <laughs> That's it. It's cool. And and just brought it immediately back. And it makes sense, sure, but the last time they were doing it so that they didn't get sued by the FCC. That's why we had network censors for so long. This time they're doing it because Apple doesn't want to upset people in China because it wants to sell phones in China. And like the motivation is very, very different. And I think that's what makes me the most uncomfortable here yeah. is that like we're seeing a very large company exert its influence directly on the things it owns and then saying like we're doing it for very greedy capitalism reasons, which is like fine. That's your job. Your job is to make money. But also if your job is to make money and your job is to create media. But also if you don't want someone talking about don't AI hire in that China, guy. don't hire John Stewart. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. Like this is the part about this I find so confusing is like there was the thing with Disney forever, right? Where Disney was reluctant to do something like add Hulu to Disney Plus because this sort of family friendly nature of a platform they called Disney mm-hmm. was very important to that company. And that has, I think, changed internally over time. But like that's a stance you can hold. Yep. If that's how you want to feel terrific. Don't hire John Stewart. <laughs> and so and so to me, it's like the, the thing that I find strange is not that Apple has these feelings, but that it really loudly wants to pretend it doesn't have these feelings. Uh, and then goes around just sort of quietly trying to steer everyone in the direction that Apple would like, which is honestly Apple's whole MO with everything all the time. Yeah. It's like Apple, Apple prefers to be sort of the wizard behind the curtain exerting influence without saying or doing anything publicly. Right. This is the closest Apple has gotten to uh, like news programming though. Like I'm fine. If Apple wants to make if Apple wants to be a movie studio and it only makes heartwarming movies about That's uplifting, fine. Yeah. Great. Sure. You're a great movie studio. Yeah, nobody's mad at the Hallmark channel for not doing like hard hitting news. I'm furious at the Hallmark <laughs> channel every single day, <laughs> sir. Uh, but like hiring John Stewart is like we're going to do news. We're going to be topical. Yeah. We're going to be relevant. And you just see most other big tech companies if they tried it and they're all running away from it as fast as like like Instagram threads. We don't want to yep. do news. They're like, this is messy. It's hard. It gets us in lots of trouble. It's not even what people want. Instagram threads, the algorithm is only going to show you content about how to be a trad wife so people can do engagement bait. And it's like, <laughs> what's happening here all day long? <laughs> right. And like, I think Apple hasn't quite had that realization yet. Yeah, I think that's true. But I, I think there's also just the, the concern that if these are also the companies that are the primary owners of how we view yeah, media yeah. and they all don't want to do news and they don't want to like talk about serious issues all the time, well, that's bad too. Yeah. yeah. Take, take a look around the media industry. Let's see how well this is going for everybody. Yeah. Okay, that's that one. Uh, speaking of Apple, antitrust, uh, two things. One, uh, the first European alternative app stores have hit because of the DMA. Not the good one yet, which is Alt Store, which is going to have the emulators in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like an enterprise one has hit, which is perfect. Yeah. Of course, enterprise software was the first to go. Yeah. Would you like um, to jump through a bunch of hoops to download B2B apps? <laughs> <laughs> if we got the store for you. Uh, but uh, Kalen Booth, uh, who's in Europe, we hired them to like look at this stuff. We have a good, deep look at it. There are a lot of hoops. Oh, yeah. It's a intense. lot of hoops. Yeah, let me, let me just read this sentence to you. It made me laugh very funny. Uh, it goes like this. You begin by clicking a browser-based link to load the alternative store. From there, you receive a pop-up informing you that your installation settings don't allow marketplaces from that developer. Then you head into settings, enable the marketplace, return to your browser, click the download link again, and receive another prompt asking you to confirm the install. Finally, you can open the store and browse the available apps. Perfect. Whew. Yeah. I feel like I'd screw that up by accident. Like, <laughs> yeah. So the argument is Apple doesn't, know if its things are in compliance with the DMA until they release them and the European regulators tell them, which is weird, right? Like, if you're going to be a regulator and you're going to insist that things are designed, you should just say how you want them designed instead of this weird back and forth. Mm -hmm. But I suspect all of this will change. 
because the way it's designed is they released it, and then the European regulators are going to be like, oh, and they're, <laughs> they're going to, huh? as they do, yeah. yeah. And they're going to say, say this isn't good enough. I think that's probably right. I also think I'm not terribly bothered by making people jump through several hoops to do this, honestly. Like, I think the the thing on the Mac where if you try to download an app from a sort of non-trusted source being like the App Store, uh, it makes you open settings, find a thing, check that box, and then go do it again. I think that is like the correct number of hoops to jump through. Like, this is the sort of thing you should not be able to do by accident. But if you want to do it, you should be able to do oh, it. Oh, I you disagree. Should just know, you should have to know that you're doing it. I, I want to be able to absolutely destroy my phone on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I, I, that's how I learned how to compute, and I want to I maintain that. And I think, like, okay. kids today, that's, you know. Kids today. The kids today, they got to learn, too. Everybody's got to learn how to, like, just destroy all of their technology because they clicked one wrong box somewhere. And it, 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 makes you, it makes you sharper. It makes you think more. And we we got we got to make people sharper and I thinking like it. more. This is how we bring down a number of Iranian centrifuges. It's yeah, just, <laughs> just let the worms proliferate. Yep, <laughs> malware builds character. <laughs> yeah, yeah basically. it does. <laughs> like, have you ever brought down an entire computer lab <laughs> trying to download one MP3? <laughs> All right, now you're a real man. Mm -hmm. um, I I think there's a balance in there because Android has had this model for a long time where mm -hmm. you can like jump through some hoops, and the argument is like. I mean, we've seen it in the Epic antitrust case against Google. Like, Google knew that people weren't doing it because the hoops were there. Right. But then you kind of don't want a bunch of people accidentally screwing things up. The thing that's really interesting, though, is Alt Store has Delta in it, which is a Nintendo emulator. By all accounts, a great emulator. Apple won't allow that on its stores. But now you're like, oh, there's an entire use case for the iPhone that's available to me now. Because right. there's an alternative application distribution model. That's worth it. Oh, yep. agreed. One hundred percent agreed. And I think it, it is. It's kind of great that that is the first thing because, like, leaving aside all the legality questions about emulation in general, like whatever, playing those kinds of games on your phone is so fun. <laughs> it's so fun, and it, and you're right that it has not been allowed, and it's never going to be allowed. And there was a minute where Riley tested the developer thought he was going to get into the App Store proper, and then got that sort of ripped out from under him. This is a couple of years ago now. Yeah. Uh, but now we're at a point where, like, if you want to go through the hoops, you are going to be able to get your phone to do almost anything. And I think that is the right approach. Yeah. I think it should be hard work to do <laughs> the dumb stuff you want to do on your phone. Like, I think it should be more than one click of one link to download malware onto your phone. But damn it, if you want to download malware onto your phone. <laughs> you should be allowed. <laughs> you should be allowed. <laughs> and I think that's fine. And I think it is going to be interesting to see from a regulatory perspective, how they view the hoops. Uh, because I think if, if the goal of the EU and the regulators in general is to make it so sort of like opaque in the process that it feels like you're downloading an app from the App Store even when you're not, I actually think that's a bad outcome. But I mm -hmm. also feel like the thing where you have to go essentially check the one box that declares the like, I know what I'm doing and I'm willing to put up the consequences and then you can move on with your life feels right to me. And this feels like a little overshoot of that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I'm very excited. To, I mean, this is the experiment. We're, we've never run it before. Like, we'll see how it goes. I, I, I think there's something really exciting to happen here. I agree. David, you've added this extremely fake story about Steve Nugent buying TikTok without the algorithm. <laughs> Defend yourself. Defend the addition of this. This is a totally fake story. This it's will a totally never fake story. The, well, this is why I added it. Because so we, we got a ton of feedback over the last couple of weeks about both the Apple antitrust stuff and the TikTok ban. Uh, and we're going to talk about all that stuff on Tuesday's episode. But for this one, my real question is more theoretical than this. Like, uh, Steve Nugent is not going to buy TikTok. Buying TikTok with the, without the algorithm he, is not way, a thing. By the way, he's the former Treasury Secretary under Trump. Yeah, who is yeah. not going to buy TikTok. <laughs> Doesn't matter who he is, he's not going to buy TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and I think... I'm just fascinated by this question. So there are two pieces of news here that I think are, are related. So one is that Facebook this week rolled out a unified video player for all of its video across platforms. Mm -hmm. And it's basically all in on precisely TikTok style yeah. vertical video. And that plus this thing where it's like, okay, what do you buy if you buy TikTok without the algorithm? Just led me to believe like maybe maybe the answer is nothing. Like we, buying TikTok without the, without the algorithm it's is, is that anything? But then we're at a point where TikTok has actually gotten more and more transparent about what the algorithm is. And so in theory, you could start to do better. And companies like Meta have 
been more explicit about like we're not going to you know show you stuff from your friends we're not going to buy us anything except engagement and entertainment essentially so it's like you can actually start to kind of reverse engineer tiktok and without this magical algorithm that is so much of what tiktok has become you're just buying a brand name right like you're buying yeah. you're buying a license Polaroid. to the word tiktok and that's well and good but tiktok without the algorithm feels like it, to me it's worth like five dollars yeah <laughs> like, i think that's I right i just don't see it and i think it, it, that if that's going to become the question and i think so far our theory which is that this is going to lead to nothing mm-hmm. has pretty much borne out we've basically heard nothing about this since there was all that stuff a couple of weeks ago i hope he does it i hope like right now as we're recording oh my God, when i think about the, the voice of the line. youth i think a former <laughs> treasury secretary <laughs> steve <laughs> Mnuchin. uh well you get all the content he'd buy all the content and then you just put any algorithm on top of it and you're fine sure yeah i mean that's what you that's what you'd be buying you'd be buying all the user generated content that is tiktok i guess that's true that's, that's, that's but also thing. all of that content now exists on all the other platforms that's too. True. That's true. So yeah. that's kind of where I'm at, right? Like if I'm if I'm the Instagram team, I'm I'm having meetings where it's like, what does TikTok have and offer at this moment that we can't? And like the the YouTube Shorts team, I know is asking that same kind of question. Like I, I know it's it all is. just sitting there, and especially if you don't have the algorithm, and the algorithm has been made out to be this like magical thing that is irreplicable and perfect and understands people better than they do themselves. I don't know that it's that. I think part of it is just that like TikTok is so shameless about the way that it works. And like Adam Masseri, who runs Instagram, is like wringing his hands trying to be a good person. And TikTok yeah. is just like, TikTok shop, let's go. TikTok is doing things. It's just happened for you. I think they're testing this. It's definitely happening to me where they just start playing an ad at the end of every video now. Mm. Oh, no. I have no. not gotten that. So you're like, you, instead of looping, it's just like, here's an ad. Uh, and all of those ads for me are for the Land Rover Defender, <laughs> which is utterly confusing. Like that algorithm believes that it can get me to buy a Land Rover Defender. And all the ads start with the same sweeping shot of the word Defender. So it's like I never know if it's just like some weird IT security company. No, it's the Land Rover Defender. That's what yep, it is. There it is. There it is again. Definitely not buying a Land Rover Defender. It's pretty good though. Yeah, it's just like – but they've started doing – like they're – the platform is getting – they're squeezing more pennies out of it, right? Because yeah. it might go away or something might happen. I feel like the, the algorithm is also just getting worse. Like it, it keeps showing me this guy going, what's up, brother? All right, Doing sketch. This? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm not a sports person. I, I don't play I Madden. Exactly what you're talking about. You guys immediately were like, yeah, yeah, we of course – maybe that's like why. On his, on his yeah, yeah, yeah I know that now uh-huh. because TikTok showed me that <laughs> repeatedly. The fact that TikTok just made a weird Twitch streamer a star is like very interesting. Mm-hmm. It's super weird. All right. Mark this down. That's a story. We'll, we'll come back to this in a week or so. But uh, this story is totally fake. This dude is not buying TikTok. No. no. Uh, last two little regulatory ones. Uh, I think it's very funny that the House of Representatives has now banned its staffers from using Microsoft Copilot because they're putting too much data into an insecure LLM system. Very funny. Yep. Just deeply funny. Um, and then we'll come back to this in more detail, but the FCC has scheduled a vote to restore net neutrality, which is very interesting. Uh, it feels like we've already ruined enough things. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like hard for anyone to get excited about this. It's like I- I'm we thrilled. did it. Like, because they took net neutrality away, I I just want to – there are people out there who are like, nothing bad happened when net neutrality went away. And one very specific bad thing happened, which is that AT&T bought Time Warner. <laughs> like, very specific bad thing happened. And they thought they could prioritize Time Warner services on AT&T's network. And then they paid Zack Snyder to make a 4-3 grayscale version <laughs> of the Justice League. Alex, did Batgirl die because net neutrality died? Yeah. Could you draw? I feel like you could draw that line. I think I think you can. Because without that acquisition, they don't have all the debt when they get offloaded, which means Zaslav doesn't have to kill Batgirl. Yeah. 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 Thanks to Jeep Pie, you ruined Batgirl. I'm just Can't saying, this it. man in his stupid mug, his stupid oversized <laughs> Reese's Pieces mug, and everyone's like, no bad things happen. And it's like, actually, one very tangible bad thing happened, which is AT&T had a theory of the case. It was like, we will buy a content service, prioritize it, and preload tiny little clips of Game of Thrones on mid-range Android phones Wait. and accept all of that from our data caps. This was, this was it. And then we're going to get Zack Snyder... For some godforsaken reason. I know he thought it was the IMAX aspect ratio, okay? I know that's what he was thinking. Mm-hmm. 
but the reality is he made a 4-3 version of <laughs> Justice League. That's how I watched it on my TV. It was a square. I'm Why? Just, you're, the more you say it, the more I feel like, what if net neutrality? Like, like, actually, that was a good thing that, that AT&T a, was allowed a four, to. We 4-3 Justice League. Yeah, because it proved that, like, no one wants that. It does prove. I will. I agree with you. Yeah. I actually agree. The market firmly rejected AT and T's <laughs> ideas. It was Correct. like, no, this is stupid. <laughs> but we didn't need to go through all that pain. We didn't need to yeah. fire all those people. We like the layoffs that occurred. The 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 general pain. Thousands of people lobbed affected. upon the American populace. <laughs> With the, black and white the, Zack Snyder the Justice four League. three Justice League was created. <laughs> like we didn't have to. Like, I'm saying like I think the layoffs were worse. Like the millions of yeah. the millions of dollars of like debt and weirdness and. But the, we all experienced the, 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 the Zack right, Snyder the movie. Rounds of rolling layoffs are bad. I don't think we need to do them. We should have healthy companies in a functional marketplace. But then also, <laughs> there was a four three Justice League. <laughs> also very tangible. We had to watch results. It. I watched all like 15 hours of it. You had to do it as a journalist. Like. And the only thing that saved me is because I invest in OLED technology. Oh my God. <laughs> the, it, the pillar boxes weren't shining they were great. so at black. <laughs> How was your bit rate? <laughs> Horrible. HGMX is a garbage <laughs> bit rate. Get that shit on Bravia Court ASAP and excuse that from your data caps, ATT. <laughs> I'm just saying, whenever anyone tells you, whenever you see the, the weirdos on the on the X being like, net neutrality led to nothing, immediately reply with a screenshot of 4-3 Justice League and Grace. I feel like the Venn diagram of weirdos on X saying net neutrality net led to nothing and the people who really wanted that 4-3 movie is a circle. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... They couldn't even, they weren't even like, just fill, make it 16, like, just no. do it. IMAX enhanced, right? <laughs> huh? Because we all have those in our house. <laughs> you don't have an IMAX screen in your house? All that OLED? I do IMAX. like that IMAX enhanced is basically meant we, we took a 21.9 cinema frame and made it 16 by 9. <laughs> it's just regular now. <laughs> it's just regular. Yeah. Like Disney, Disney Plus is like IMAX enhanced. Like, what does that mean? It's, it's 16 by 9. Yeah. That's like, that's what that has worked out to. It's great. All right. That vote is coming up. Uh, we'll probably have Lauren back to cover it mm -hmm. in more detail what it actually means. There's some meaningful differences between this version and previous versions. I just want to point out that, uh, again, you live in an America right now, 2024, where uh, Batgirl was killed. David Zaslov. Can't believe reign it. Reign of terror continues. <laughs> We're down to three wireless carriers and Project Gen 5 sis. All because of the stupid mug. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real thing. Uh, and there's no um, – by the way, at the same time, the same Ajit Pai FCC uh, got rid of the privacy protections for broadband carriers mm -hmm. and any ability to regulate them all. Mm -hmm. These are our favorite companies, the ISPs. I should note at this time that NBC Universal is a minority investor in Vox Media, mm -hmm. which owns The Verge, and NBC Universal is owned by Comcast, right. which does not love net neutrality, or me. As it happens, <laughs> I subscribe to Verizon. It's okay. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I Fios. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. I'm an AT&T subscriber. I stream Justice League for free. Oh wow! That was that. Didn't hit my data cap at all. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> this big for you. Uh, my AT&T subscription still locked into Max, and so now I only have Max and 1080p. <laughs> it's very good. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back. We're back with what David has titled the Everything Else Lightning Round. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of grab baggy. Sponsored by Everything Else. <laughs> Sponsored by Everything Else. Yeah. Sponsored by Walmart. Uh, Did you, you get, get a free else? blue check from X this week? No. No. Sad. I hesitate to talk about Elon on the show. Like, Did you get a, a oh, blue yeah. check? Yeah. yeah. The, oh. Me, the guy who wrote Welcome to Hell Elon, has now been gifted a blue check it's on your, X. Congratulations, you're an influencer. Yeah. I don't know what that means. It's I, all working because now you're talking about it. See, I'm, he got you. Yeah, that's And right. you're going to use Grok now. Can't wait to buy a Tesla. Uh -huh. He's had a bad couple weeks here. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So Tesla deliveries are way down under forecast. I've, ne I've never seen it before, but various investors and executives are talking about replacing Elon as CEO. Mm -hmm. That will probably never happen. But even the fact that it is a conversation that has occurred, like in the CNBC orbits, 
The shine Seem, is off. Seems very bad. Tesla stock is generally tanking. Yep. E- Elon is just tweeting about the woke mind virus instead of shipping more cars <laughs> or making X good. It's not great over there. No. No. I think there was a thing about Tesla that made him kind of invincible for a really long time because it was like the the conversation around Elon for so long was like, say whatever you want. People are voting with their dollars, right? Like Tesla was on fire. Investors loved it. People were buying it. We talked on the show about how there was essentially unlimited demand for Teslas. And at some point in the last year or so, that turned. And I think you can probably blame that on a confluence of things. Not all of it is a lot of people decided they don't like Elon Musk anymore, but I think I, some of it is that. But like this sort of era of power that Tesla had for a long time seems pretty clearly to be, if not over, then under like really serious threat. And as we've been saying, and I think as you in particular, Neil, I have said a few times on this show, uh, Tesla is both like a great strength and a great weakness for Elon because of the way it ties him to China, because of the way it like has all of his fortunes <laughs> inside of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that like what happens to this company is so materially important to what happens to everything else that Elon Musk wants to do, including the way that SpaceX works with the government. Like yep. it's all so tied up. And so you get the sense that as it is starting to turn the other way, it like it, the spiral happens in the reverse direction too. Yeah. Yep. And it feels like it's getting really ugly really fast. So we have a story this week. Uh, there's a reputation tracking firm called Caliber. We went out and surveyed a bunch of people. Uh, the consideration score for Tesla, which is basically consumer interest in brands, the question they went and surveyed people, I would buy or continue buying products and services from Tesla if given the chance. Uh, in November 2021, 70% of people said yes. That's down to 31%. Oof. Oof. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that... Everything about that, because we've we've seen the quality has dropped. We've seen people talking more about that quality. We've mm-hmm. seen people struggling with getting their cars repaired, getting getting this like customer service is really, really bad there. So yeah, all those things that actually do matter to a consumer experience and and Elon kind of was like, don't worry about it. we're 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 building yeah. the future. Eventually, people are like, yes, but I want my car to work now. Right. I also think this ongoing uh, full self-driving fiasco that Mm -hmm. this company just cannot get out of where it refuses to stop calling full self-driving when it is not full self-driving and actually what it's doing is really dangerous. Like the the public perception on that, I think, is like decidedly negative at this point. Yeah. Uh, Which is really like even outside of how you feel about Elon Musk, the idea that Tesla is like the future of cars in a lot of ways like hinges on that. Right. Oh, their like, entire valuation hinges on that. Right. Like I've watched uh, – I mean I, I go on CNBC all the time. I talk to the analysts there. You you look at how the market values Tesla and it's still built into the idea that you will go to work and your car will like leave your house and like drive itself and be right. a taxi service. Right. The Tesla is going to be like infrastructure. Yeah. 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 Right. And like now it's a car company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's the – but all of the multiple of Tesla is built on the idea that – the cars will generate more value than just being a depreciating asset that most people should so lease. So, did they yeah. all think it was Uber? Yeah, that's like that's the idea here. Like the multiple, and that's why Elon is constantly talking about AI now. Yeah, all this stuff, and he's like, AI, like Tesla's really an AI company because he's trying to get this other thing to happen and get this other multiple. And it's like the market is starting to just see a car company, a car company that uh, shipped a Triangle. <laughs> instead of a regular pickup truck, um, a car company that can't deliver like well-made cars on yeah. a regular, like all this stuff, and whose CEO is becoming more and more unpopular by the day because he won't shut up. Yep. We like I talk to a lot of CEOs. They're not all pleasant people. <laughs> 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 like by and large, like very aggressive Type A personalities mm-hmm. in the C-suites of American companies, but they know to not. They have people around them. <laughs> yeah. they, they hire publicity yeah. firms and stuff, which yeah. Elon famously refuses. And like, don't tweet. Do. Turns out to be pretty good advice. Yeah, most especially of the time. about the woke mind virus and the great replacement theory. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you're a publicly traded company, don't don't tweet. If you're a publicly traded company that sells electric cars to uh, extremely liberal people, by and large. <laughs> Just doing some white supremacy on the side. It's like not a great idea yeah, for you. Yeah, not great uh, for your value. Anyway, it's it's just a weird time. Like to bring this all back around. X now giving the check marks away to journalists for free. Very funny. Yes. 
like all the way back around. They're like, what if we verified some people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's because they, they need people to use the platform. And I, I, I suspect it won't work. But No, if anything, it, it seems to be uh, – like do you remember that moment right after – they said you're going to have to start paying for the blue check, but they hadn't taken it away from people who had it before. Mm-hmm. And all these people are coming out saying, no, 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 just so you know, I didn't pay for it. Yeah, it's We're, we're doing that again, where people are, like, embarrassed to have a blue check. Yeah, but— In a way that it is, like, it's a, it's a badge of, like, you are pathetically still using this platform <laughs> rather than was, something you're actually part of. I was going to say, it kind of works, because then you have to go log in and tweet, or excuse me, post, I didn't— pay for this check mark. <laughs> yeah. Like, like they got gotcha. you. And your unregretted user minutes go through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. That's enough Elon talk for one day. Mm-hmm. Spotify reportedly having a price increase. They've, they've realized they increased. They look, they increased prices last year. had their best year ever. They also laid off a bunch of people and had cuts. So mm-hmm. they increased revenue, reduced costs heartlessly, but do it. But, Th- that does, in it fact, work. Out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Math, usually maths out. There's, it's, there's not a lot of places to go from Spotify. Like, I don't think people are like, ah, oh, Spotify is going up. I'm switching to YouTube Music. No, people should not and are not <laughs> doing that. Uh, I mean, I think to me, the thing that seems to be true is that 9.99 was the wrong price for streaming music. We just kind of decided this, like, years ago. It was just, like, in the same way that Steve Jobs was just like, what if songs cost 99 cents? And everybody was like, all right. Like, a long time ago, it was just, like, 10 bucks a month, and it's just where we are. And it turns out that uh, is good money for record labels yeah, and bad both for mm-hmm. most artists and most streaming companies. Well, I mean, Spotify did it because that was when they were they were coming into the United States where you had this really entrenched market run by Apple. Right. And they were like, okay, we got to compete with 99 cent songs. How do we do that? $10 a month and you get all of the songs. And, and we were right. all like, yes, that's Victory. sick. Yeah. And I think if it had been 20 bucks a month, it probably wouldn't have worked. So, but if it had been 20 bucks a month, it might have been a hell of a lot more sustainable. Yeah. I mean, I would say the last 10 plus years of like $10 a month, that's, that's a pretty good run. For that's better run than like Netflix. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, I, I actually think we as users probably saved a lot of money <laughs> over the last <laughs> yeah. decade on 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 Spotify's dime. But I think this feels super inevitable to me, and this will not be the last one. I don't think yeah. that like it went from nine ninety nine to ten ninety nine, and now the report is it's going to go up. I think either one or two more dollars. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would not be surprised if a couple of years from now we're at like fifteen bucks for Spotify. What? I'll still pay it. Like, m- music services are awesome. Uh, yeah. I have I have zero qualms with the fact that I have all the music on earth available to me at all times. But it is it is a bummer to see this. I'm more sensitive to this for Spotify because like it's a bad business for Spotify. <laughs> it's not Spotify being like we make lots of money, but we want more. Give us more. This is Spotify being like we literally cannot do this anymore. <laughs> Please give us more money. Yeah. How do you all feel like Al- Apple will respond to this? Uh, I don't think Apple will raise their prices at all, actually. I think that any price increases get rolled into Apple One, mm-hmm. and that's just what that's they're right. going to keep doing. I think Apple Music, they run it as a loss leader to get you into that bigger bundle. I don't even pay for it. I get it through <coughs> my Verizon account, and I'm like, all right. Yeah, I think Apple is very cool. happy to uh, let that be somewhere between a, an okay business and a slightly yeah. less than okay business in service of everything else. Yeah. And they want you in that Apple One bundle yeah. as, as hard as they can be. Uh, when all their services went down, it was like people searched for the App Store being down and a little bit of Apple TV and nothing else. Uh-huh. Oh, it was so sad. We were looking at the the thing we put in like, we we're like, well, what about Arcade? No. We couldn't even like find the line yeah. on the graph. We're like, oh, that's yeah. a bummer. That's Which bad. is funny because Apple Music is hugely popular. Like it is, it is Apple Music and Spotify are the two winners in this market by a gigantic margin. Well, it's not the one people go googling when they can't get <laughs> it on their rush hour. Definitely not. All right, two stories that are in conflict in really interesting ways. Hmm. Uh, OpenAI has a new voice cloning model. <laughs> it only needs fifteen seconds mm-hmm. of audio to clone your voice. Fascinating. And there was a fake George Carlin special. Uh, they settled with the estate of George Carlin. They promised not to do it anymore. Actually, uh, a weird drama inside of that story is uh, 
whether there was actually AI used to make the fake George Carlin special or whether they were faking it, which is interesting. Well, they igno- they admitted to writing it themselves. Yeah. Uh, how the rest of it was produced, I think, as far as I know, at least, has not been really nailed down. But the idea that this was like written, produced, and created yeah. by AI, just flatly not true. And it's been a really fun thing going around. Like there was this whole story this week about how uh, Amazon's just walkout technology was actually py- powered by like a thousand contractors in India yeah. manually reviewing your trip through to make sure <laughs> that you paid for everything. Uh, and I think it was Molly White who runs the the website. Like, I think it's, what is it? Web3 is going great. Yeah. Uh, who was basically like, I wish I had been tracking all the times that AI turned out to just be a guy. It's really true. And this feels like that too. It's just, it's just a guy. It yeah. doesn't help that one of them is like from Mad TV. Like yeah. one of the hosts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But these two ideas are intention. We've talked about this so many times, like AI being able to clone a voice or clone a picture, da, 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 da. and then you have uh, and doing it faster than ever. F- you need fifteen seconds of our voices to clone us, yeah. which mm-hmm. we have generated more of that on this very very <laughs> podcast. You're um, welcome. Uh, and then it's like, oh, but we have no controls over how those likenesses are used or any of that is actually being done, except for these handful of lawsuits that might bring the whole thing crashing down. Yeah. Well, and OpenAI's strategy has been so far to roll it out really slowly and only with a few partners. And it's like, okay, that's fine at the beginning. But then what's going to happen is you're going to have a better version of this technology that you give to everybody. Yeah. So, like, what's the plan then? Yeah. <laughs> it's like if they were saying, you know, it takes – 900 hours so we're only letting a few people use it because it's hugely intensive I'd be like okay well whatever but this is like we found a very good technology but only a few people can have it and then everybody can have a very good technology like what are we <laughs> what are we accomplishing here yeah uh, well, but I think I mean this is this has been coming right like the 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 New York Times I think it was this week had a big announcement about how uh, most of its articles are now going to be available in audio form read by uh, automated narrators like Eleven Labs, which is a company we've talked about on the show before, is doing like incredible slash terrifying work synthesizing people's voices. Like this stuff is moving as fast as any other tech in AI right now, and it's getting really crazy really fast. And I feel like probably should be talked about more than it is yeah. in the way that we talk about like generated images and how they're being used in political campaigns and all of this stuff. Like you're going to start – you're going to get phone calls from Joe Biden telling you not to vote. Like that's a thing that's going to start to happen. It's already happened. It, it, yeah, yeah, it's like it happened. Yeah. yeah. And I think like this – open AI is uh, typically very good at this and I think is not usually wrong when it says it built something good uh, but is not great at playing it slow. Yeah. By the way, one story that hit just as we were we, – we, as we've been talking on this podcast, uh, Neil Mohan who runs YouTube – at a conference, said OpenAI should not train its systems on YouTube, which is not how OpenAI has thought about the internet. No. <laughs> and who was it? It was uh, was it Mira Marathi at, yeah. at OpenAI who said to Joanna Stern, our friend, uh, Joanna was when they were talking about the video thing Sora that OpenAI came out with. Joanna was like, "Are you training this on stuff from the internet?" And she's like, "Ah, oh, some training stuff, <laughs> internet, public, private." And Joanna was like, "Are you getting it from YouTube?" And she was just like, "I don't know." <laughs> and so it's like, "Oh, okay, so you're obviously getting it from YouTube." <laughs> yeah, like cool. It's not great. Uh, no. If Google sues OpenAI on behalf of YouTube creators for training, it's, it's a weird. Oh, there's boy. a copyright apocalypse here. We did an entire decoder with Sarah Jong. You can go listen to it. But there's a potential copyright apocalypse. Yeah. Mr. Beast is going to make a video in which he sues OpenAI for $100 million. And then gives the money away. <laughs> gives the money away. <laughs> that would be incredible. All right. We got to end this thing. We're way, way over. But, David, you should end by talking about Google Podcasts. Well, this is a, this is a good. We're circling back yeah. around to we're closing the loop on Google not closing the loop. <laughs> uh, Very good. Google could stand to learn from us. So Google Podcasts is dead, uh, mm. although it's actually not dead. It's like, ironically, Google has so forgotten about Google Podcasts that it seems to have forgotten to turn it off. Was uh, that it, it was that that was its like podcast app? Yeah. So it, it had a dedicated podcast app. It came out in 2016. Uh, been around for a while. It did what Google does to many of its apps, which is like it launched. It had big ideas. It seemed kind of cool. It got a couple of updates. Google forgot about it. Google launched a competitor, and then Google killed it. (laughs) (laughs) This is the story of Google Apps. And so the plan here is to replace Google Podcasts with YouTube Music, and they've been making some moves into YouTube Music. There is a 
I would say strong chance you are watching or listening to this podcast right now on YouTube. Uh, part of the reason Google is investing in YouTube is because that is a vast and massively growing place for podcasts. But it had this really cool opportunity in podcasts, right? Like Google, I went back and read their initial thing and in 2016 when they launched this app. And they had these big ideas about discovery and helping people find insights inside of podcasts and doing audio transcription and f search and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, that seems good. Like, why didn't you do any of that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that would have been cool. And instead, you just forgot about this app for eight years and then killed it. And YouTube is not going to do that Are they yeah. going to release... Google Podcasts with Gemini at Google I.O. Oh, my God. That if they relaunched Google Podcasts at I.O., that, that would be Gemini. incredible. With Gemini. Uh, they could have also solved uh, huge amounts of podcast analytics yep. and advertising problems yep. that everyone has all over the place. Yep. I heard uh, from a lot of people after I wrote this story. I had a paragraph in here basically being like, hey, Google, if you had just done for audio creators what you did for video creators on YouTube, you could have won this industry the same way that you did. And I heard from a surprising number of podcasters who were like, I have been begging slash hoping YouTube would do that for years. Mm -hmm. Like build the ad tools, do the rev share, let me post my stuff on YouTube and make money from it as an audio creator the same way you can as a video creator. And there are lots of, I was about to say good reasons, but they're bad reasons. But there are lots of reasons Google didn't do that, but it didn't do that. And it yeah. could have. And that sucks. I remember being in meetings at our company. It's like, Google's coming. We better be ready. And I'm like, dude. Uh, nah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They'll get distracted. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, man. Yeah. But also to everyone who wants to know, the answer is Pocket Casts. Pocket Casts. Mm -hmm. If you want Android. a good cross-platform podcast app that is not going to go away, the answer is Pocket Casts. There are other good ones out there. Antenna Pod's really good on Android. Overcast, Apple Podcasts. But if you want to know the answer, it's Pocket Casts. All right. We'll end there with that completely un, uh, uncontroversial opinion that yeah. no one will The lightning round brought to you by Pocket Casts. <laughs> no, nope, you got to pay the money. <laughs> <laughs> we can't give this stuff away for free, man. <laughs> Perceived value. Yeah, you're right. I apologize. Brought to you by anything other than Pocket Casts. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's the Vergecast. I'm going to call it a few stories. Um, Becca did a comparison video of the... Fujifilm X106 versus the Ricoh GR3X. I'm saying it slowly because that's just a lot of letters. It's a, lot. So, it's a lot of Roman numerals yeah. in yeah, that. Yeah, it's not good. But it's really fun. I'm desperate to buy these cameras for no reason other than I just want them. Um, uh, Allison wrote about notifications being bad, which is worth reading. She's right. No takeaways. Yeah. Just like start over. <laughs> just like throw all this away. It's bad. Yeah. Uh, and then Liz wrote about Vice. Uh, one of the weirdest, wildest stories I think we've done in a long time. We did an entire decoder with Liz about the story. She's going to listen to that next week. But the gist of it is we thought we were writing a story about how advertising on the web was like went sideways and couldn't support Vice because they shut down their newsroom oh. website. Mm -hmm. So we thought we were writing about like advertising cookies and programmatic. And no, no, we were, we were just writing about crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story. She talked to 20 people. She described reporting that story as a uh, hall of mirrors because they all hate each other. They're all lying to each other, about each other. It's very good. Beautiful. Including one part where it was revealed that Vice had a NetJets account uh, that was on, on the budget of their digital division. And then two different people took credit for shutting it down. And Vice's response to us was, we have not had a NetJets account since 2021. Oh. <laughs> Which is like... There you go. So you did have a net chance account. <laughs> yeah. We're saying. really proud of it's you. It's very good. Uh, great story. Go read that. That's it. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, we got nominated for a bunch of Webby Awards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the People's, for Best Technology Podcast, the big Webby and the People's Choice, go vote for us. We'll have a link. Go vote for us in the Webby Wait, Awards. Also, listen, people, it's it's so important that you vote for the Vergecast as technology podcast. And Decoder, Decoder is also nominated in business <laughs> podcast. Neil, I can have his. That's all fine. I need you to vote for the first cast. <laughs> it's so important that Neli does not win as decoder. It's so important. Please they vote really for the did. The Webbies really did a sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the business win. Give give this show the tech win. Yeah, you get to have it. Decoder way. is nominated in both categories. Yeah. Okay. Just look for my face and click on it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's gonna be great. All right, that's it. We're way over. On a slow week, we still went way over. That's it. That's the first cast. Rock and roll. And that's it for The Vergecast this week. Hey, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 866-VERGE-11. The Vergecast is a production of The Verge and Vox Media Podcast Network. Our show is produced by Andrew Marino and Liam James. That's it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>